Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Chapter 4 has finally gone live. Unfortunately, the opening cinematic didn't seem to work, so I can't show you what that looked like. But we're getting straight into it on difficulty 3 with the Rivendell team. And as you can see, those Banes stack up very quickly, which takes a lot of the advantage away from the Elves. When you first come into the battle, he does try and inflict blind on everybody. That's why when I first started attacking, I didn't quite realize what had happened and I was trying to use special moves. Be very careful before you tap any buttons. If you do have blind, save your special moves for later. Now, the main goal of this is to try and get his health down to zero so you can knock him down and get a few extra hits in. That is a very difficult task, especially on difficulty three. The elves don't quite have huge damage to try and knock that health down. And as you can see, once he gets into this flame mode, he just starts piling on the damage. The one good thing about the elves though, Arwen does have that cleanse, which can get you quite a lot of points. Elrond also with his healing and revival, he's going to keep you in the game just that little bit longer. But this is a very, very tough chapter to score some of those big points on. Now, I know that Balan's Expedition has been the team that has been touted to do really well in this chapter. Obviously, over the next week and a bit, we're going to get the last two elves entered into the game as marquees. You're going to have to spend a lot of money if you really want to do well, even on difficulty 3 here. But for all the free-to-play players out there, I strongly suggest that you start doing all the groundwork with Balan's Expedition, because they will be very good in the long run. Getting the gear abilities and level all done and then in a few months time when we can start farming shards that's when you're really going to see the results but do all the groundwork that you can nice and early all right so this run has almost finished here the balrogs really making burnt toast out of us i'm not even going to get to that 300,000 mark so it looks like Maybe even difficulty 2 is something I'm going to have to drop back to and try and get a better score. But I think the best strategy for everyone is go down to difficulty 1, put your teams in, get used to the way that it works, and see if you can get some better results out of that. So I'm running my Road to Rivendell team now on difficulty 1. So that way I can just kind of gauge how well they might do. I haven't fully developed these guys yet. They're still quite under strength, but they're going to be good enough to at least put some points on the board. Hopefully I can max out difficulty one and at least get that 100,000, but we're just gonna have to run it and see what happens here. It's very difficult to know the best strategy just yet, but for this particular team, Make sure that you max out Pippin's passive ability, so that way he always removes a Bane from one of his teammates on his turn. You see, he just did it there. That was an extra 500 points for nothing that I was able to put onto my score there. But even on difficulty 1, it's very difficult to score points in this particular chapter but at least you're able to get the Balrog down to zero health and put a few more points on and kind of build that strategy of how you're going to work your team moving forward. Some of my guildmates that have put quite a lot into this team did score over 400,000 on difficulty three with them. So in terms of the difficulty of this chapter, I think that does make this team quite viable for chapter four but I still have a lot of work to do to get them up to that kind of level. Ability mats at the moment are really holding me back. There's so many abilities that I need to upgrade with this team. It just takes such a long time to get there. From what I've seen so far, damage is definitely the key here. Because you can't use any damage over time, like bleed or 
poison or anything like that, you're really relying on brute strength to do that damage. Because as you can see here, when you actually knock him down, that's where you score the big points. If you can't get him to that stage, then you're really going to need to drop back to the lower difficulty or start trying to look at a different team to use. One team that I do think is going to do really well in this chapter is Gondor, simply because they have that immunity from Denethor's leadership ability. And I think that's only a level three upgrade, so it's really easy to do. If you do have the resources to start building that team, it might be a good idea to start down that path as well. Unfortunately, at this stage with all the teams that you need for the raid, so many of them involve light side and there just aren't the resources out there to be able to get all of these projects done. So it's going to take quite a while to get those teams up and running. So with anything that I would suggest when it comes to the raid, always work on one team at a time. Pick a light side, pick a shadow side, and that way as you run out of some of the crystals, you can swap over and start working on other ones. 75k for this particular battle, not what I was looking for. So the next team that I ran was Bolg's team. I do have Halberad in there as my healer. Now one thing that I do want to recommend with Bolg is on his first special ability, he does have that heal block. So when you do knock the Balrog down, if you can time it properly and you're able to use that first special ability while he is down, it should stop him from healing and hopefully gives you a few more shots before he gets up and starts to enrage. Now this team here, I do have them all at gear eight. The only one that's not is Halberad. He is still only gear seven. Unfortunately, these guys are all still low star levels. So I'm not gonna get the damage output that I really want from this. Once you can get some of these teams up to that seven star mark, you're gonna see a huge jump in their performance in the raid. The other downside to this team is even though Halberad can heal, he's not the best healer. It does take him quite a while for that heal to come back around again. The team doesn't really stay alive that long. But one thing that is really good for this team, if you do max out the first special ability for Nuraz, which is his Mountain Medicine, that cleanses Banes from the entire team. And because you can summon in that other troll, that means that you're dispelling Banes from six characters rather than five. So there's a lot of bonus points that you can get just from maxing that out. And you can do that every three turns. And as you can see, the troll does seem to be staying alive for quite a while. So you should be able to get a few cleansers in on all six of them. I think this team really does have quite good potential for this chapter of the raid but it does take a lot of work. A lot of them are very late farms in the game as well and on hard nodes. So it's not the easiest team to try and get to that seven star level. But if any of you guys do have this team fleshed out quite a lot, let me know in the comments how you go with your scores. I'd be really interested to know what the real potential of this team is. But it looks like we're coming to the end of our run now. There's a lot of very crispy orcs and trolls out there. We're probably not going to quite make the 80k mark. No, 77,000. That's still on difficulty 1. This chapter is so hard to score points. There could be a little bit of an RNG factor in there. So it might be worth doing a couple of attempts just to see what kind of scores you can get. One of my guildmates did say that he had better success when the Balrog went into shadow form than when he went into flame form. But next, I'm running my Haradrim. The only reason that I'm running them is because they do have a little bit of gear on them so that they can post something, but I'm not expecting a huge amount out of this team. 
The simple fact with these guys is that their main weapon is that Black Serpent's poison, and because you can't actually poison the Balrog, it's not really going to do anything. But while the Haradrim are doing their thing out there, one thing I want to point out that they also did put both Bekelu and Tebeb into the game. They are now farmable for everybody. Bekelu has been added to the guild node 4-7, which is actually really good because not only can you easily farm her all the way up to 7 stars, but by farming her, you're also going to be able to get a lot of those purple mats along the way. Now, I know that a lot of you are probably farming Gimli at the moment. I'm very close to getting him to six stars, so it won't be too far away before I finish him off at seven stars. But Bekelu is definitely very tempting to start on next. The other one that was added to the game is Tebeb, who is the leader of the Haradrim here. Unfortunately, they've put her in the challenge store. But to make it even worse, instead of it being a thousand tokens for two shards, it is 1500 tokens for two shards. That is absolute highway robbery, if you ask me, because the challenge store is the hardest place to try and farm any character from. If you've been trying to farm Bolg or Halbarad, you'll definitely know what I'm talking about. To farm them all the way up to seven stars, you're going to be looking at about two years worth of farming at the current rate. So they either need to increase the amount of tokens that they give us, or they're going to need to reduce the cost of these characters. They could even change it from two shards to five for the same amount. That at least would give us a better way to farm these characters. Let me know your thoughts in the comment on this, but as you can see, under 40,000, I'm not really impressed with them at the moment for this chapter. I know that I need a lot more work on them, but I don't know that they're really going to be the best option for this chapter. The next team that I'm going to run is kind of a mishmash team that I've been able to put together with some of my leftover characters that I've kind of half worked on that are good enough to at least score some points. So I have Eowyn as the leader. Obviously, Aomar is going to work well with her. Then we've got Leliel and also Nehramiri, which is some of the elves that I was working on for Elrond. They're still kind of undergeared, but still good enough to at least be used. And then, of course, the ultimate plug-and-play character in Gaza. Now, if I'm being honest, I've actually been able to get some much better results out of this mishmash team than what I've been able to get out of some of my more established teams. So at some stage, I may even start working on this team together as far as gear and star levels and things like that are concerned, because I know that they are quite viable and they can be interchanged in and out depending on the chapter that you're currently working through. Now, if you do have your Rohan team built up, especially with Eothane, I think with his counter-attack ability, I think you're going to see some good results because the Balrog likes to work on some big AoE hits. So when he does that, you'll have the entire team that are going to counter-attack all at once, which could quite easily knock him down. Unless, of course, he inflicts blind on everybody as he likes to do there. I think it's worth the experiment because at least the core three from Rohan are probably going to do quite well in this particular chapter. I think Isengard might also be pretty good. They can do some decent damage and plus Dunhard does have that heal block as well, which... Again, I'd really like to be able to time things properly with, with Bolg to try and get it to work on the Balrog and just to see if that's going to be something that allows you to score a few extra points. One thing that I have really noticed just from trying to throw these teams together is Nehramiri is actually a very, very good healer and does seem to work quite well with Rohan. She is also a very easy farm all the way up to 7 stars because she is in one of the guild nodes. 
And as far as the raid is concerned, she seems to be pretty viable in every single chapter. You can also sub her into the Rivendell team as well. And also, because the Balans Expedition team works with both Elves and Dwarves, I have a sneaky feeling that Nehrimiri is going to be a very, very good character to add to that team. But have a look at this team go, there's still a lot of health on all of these characters, and none of them are above gear 5 either. I haven't put a hell of a lot of work into them, but I really should. I think it's even worth testing these guys on difficulty 2 for this particular chapter. You never know, they might be able to get over that 100,000 mark, especially with that multiply kicking in. But have a look at this, I think we're actually going to do it. Yes, we did max out difficulty 1. So this is definitely a very viable combination to use in this chapter of the raid. So for all of you guys that have invested in the Rohan 3, definitely going to see some results in chapter 4 of the raid. Now to finish this one off, I wanted to go back and revisit Rivendell again on difficulty 2. They're a very interesting team because they can survive quite well in a battle. I have a feeling that the results are going to be very similar on difficulty 2 as they are on difficulty 3. Even though they could probably knock the Balrog down a couple of times on difficulty 2, just being able to stay in the fight on difficulty 3 is going to get all of those other passive points a lot faster. As you can see, Eowyn can really get a lot of points with her cleanse. I just want to see whether or not I can get past that 200,000 mark. I've got a feeling that I might be able to get a better result out of difficulty 2 for the time being. The elves just don't seem to be doing enough damage there. I think maybe if I could sub in Legolas into the team, that might help. He can really pack a punch. But I don't think the full Rivendell team is the best option here. The problem with Legolas is he is currently still sitting at gear 1 for me. So I haven't really done anything with him since the Marquee event. He is on my list of characters to do, but that is a very long list, so unless there is a really good team for me to put him in, I'll probably have to keep him on the back burner for now. Because when it comes to building raid teams, you really do need quite a variety of teams to be able to use throughout all of the chapters, and you just can't do them all at once. So you have to look at the areas where you're going to make the most amount of points. And for me, it's chapters 1 and 3 currently where I seem to do the best. And then chapters 2 and 4 are the ones that I'm going to have a slower build on and eventually start to build up the extra points there. Now it does look like I am getting the points building up quite quickly. I don't know if I'm really going to beat that 150,000 mark. Sometimes it really is better to do difficulty 3 because that points multiplier if you can just stay in the fight that little bit longer you can score a lot more points than doing difficulty 2 but there is that fine line i know that if you don't quite have the gear on some characters going from difficulty 2 up to 3 can really mean that your team gets smashed quite quickly and you don't score many points at all but if you can max out the points on difficulty 2 in any of the chapters then you really should be trying difficulty 3 just for those extra points number one you're going to get more rewards for yourself but number two you're going to be pushing for those better rewards as a guild with your own contribution the only exception to the rule currently is chapter 3 where we know that Doing difficulty 3 in that chapter is the only one that you should be doing. Difficulty 1 and 2, you end up getting less points than if you just run weaker teams that are a little bit faster on difficulty 3. You're going to outscore your other difficulties. But back to our current battle, and we are at that threshold that we are at on difficulty 3. So it's around that ballpark. 
I'm not sure if we're going to do too much better. The revive is going to put us back in a little bit. Man, it would have been good if that cleanse was available to us there. But unfortunately, it wasn't. I don't know that they're going to last for another turn. That Balrog is absolutely destroying us. Yes, there we go. I did get some extra points there. I think we're going to have to keep working on this to see what scores I can get out of it. But it looks like that's it for this one, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget, like and sub. You know the deal. We've got plenty more Heroes of Middle-Earth coming your way. Don't miss out, and we'll catch you in the next one.